My Mazda MX-5 here has been suffering from an intermittent check engine light. And as far as I can tell, it appears to be the uh, exhaust bypass solenoid, the little, um, I guess, gas emission solenoid that sends some of the exhaust gases through the charcoal canister. Now, I know or I think it's that because I've been using this little Bluetooth OBD sensor checker thingy for a few years now, and they're pretty cheap, pretty reliable. They give you a little bit of information. You hook it up to your mobile phone, find some random app on the App Store, and you'll get an, an error code. It works pretty well. It gives you a bit of data. It's actually a useful diagnostic tool for a home DIY mechanic type of person because they're cheap. These things are like, I don't know, $20 or something. The apps are usually free and you get some info to try and diagnose an issue on your car. So then you might be asking yourself, cool, Brendan, so what's this story all about? Well, here's the thing. These diagnostics that you're doing on the more modern cars require a little bit more fancy technology. And historically, only mechanics could afford like the really fancy diagnostic tools because they were thousands of dollars. And hence why I was resorting to a little Bluetooth dongle. But these days you can get these sort of actual genuine mechanic style diagnostic tools for only a couple of hundred bucks. I got this one from CG Sulit, and I'm kind of curious to see how it compares to, between the, the cheapy Bluetooth app version and uh, a proper tool. And if I get any more information, if it's any easy to use, and is it worth the extra, you know, couple hundred bucks versus a $20 thing and a mobile app. Now under the bonnet of this car, I'm pretty sure this is the guy that's at fault. The EGR solenoid thingo, which effectively is doing some sort of gas bypasses between the exhaust and the intake to do some emission stuff. Exactly what it does and how it works, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that's what's causing our check engine code. So let's go find out. And so we're gonna be doing this in an MX-5 interior, which is a little bit constrained, hence why I'm using the GoPro. You get a bit of a wider view on things. And now you might be saying to yourself, hang on, Brennan, that's an NAMX-5. There's no OBD2 on that car. Actually, because I've run a full NB2 wiring loom engine everything through this car, I do actually have OBD2. It lives under my right knee, just under the dash here. There's a panel and um, I've plugged in my dongle here. And we should be able to just turn on the ignition. And so we're going to use the head unit as our um, device to connect to the Bluetooth dongle because I already have the Talk app set up here. And if we hit fault codes and do a bit of a scan, let's see what we get. And so we have three faults on our screen. We have P0443 powertrain evaporative emission control system purge control valve circuit, which is uh, exactly the error I was expecting. That's the one I've seen or seen in the recent past. Uh, and then we've got two more here, P1497 and P1498. And uh, according to that, Mazda EGR valve motor coil three open or shorted and EGR valve motor coil two open or shorted. So I don't know exactly what that means if they're related. I think they are. Sounds like they might be. But um, that's sort of as much as we can get out of our Android and Bluetooth dongle setup, which isn't bad. To be honest, I got some fault codes. I know kind of where I need to look. Uh, you can do a web lookup from this app, which just Googles the fault code for you. Uh, but very interesting. Now I've just plugged in the CG Sulit, uh, slightly amusing name. And um, visually looks pretty cool. Interface is kind of nice. It's got a nice big screen, clear to read. So I guess we go to OBD. So we need to choose our protocol. Now, the thing with the talk, app and that Bluetooth dongle is it does it all itself. Um, this has got an auto scan option and it's got a select protocol option. I know with the MX-5s it's um, ISO standard. Uh, let's see if auto scan works. Right, so first little issue I had, I couldn't quite get it connected. I realized the problem was that the plug down there was uh, quite firm to get in and it wasn't fully seated. Uh, but now we can get into here and go to our OBD and select ISO and it'll connect pretty quickly, I hope. There we go. And it's already said it's found a code. I don't know if that means fault code. And there's some other fields there. Monitors, OK, NC, in, INC. I don't know what any of those mean. We're just going to hit OK. And we're now in. We can do system status, read codes, erase codes, live data, onboard monitor test, vehicle info, modules present. Let's read codes. Stored codes. 
So we've got that same P0443 EVAP system purge control valve A circuit, and there's a pending codes. So perhaps those are the other two. Manufacturer codes, please select the vehicle manufacturer. Uh, okay, interesting. Mm, this is sorted randomly. Seemingly so. There's not like an alphabetical order here. I'm just going to have to scroll till I find... Oh, there it is, Mazda. Okay, so there you go. We do have P1497 and 1498. Please refer to service manual. So we actually got more info from Talk than we did from uh, this in terms of those two codes, which is curious. Uh, live data and number of DTCs, one... Fuel system status, calculated load valves. We are getting data. We've got intake, air temps, engine RPMs, floor position, O2 sensor date details, fuel trim bank numbers, all sorts of interesting data here. So our no next option here is a diagnostic option where we actually have to choose our car, I guess. So I'm going to go Asia. And Mazda over here. Oh, we've got Ford AU. How interesting. So that's Ford Australia, Holden, the other Aussie brand on here. So Mazda, uh, Smart, VIN, or manual selection. What if we do manual selection? Oh, we can choose a car now. So uh, MX5, 1.8, BP, 2002 is fine. Yeah. Live data. Loading. Ah, interesting. So, these are all our options. Coolant temp, coolant temp, fan control signals, fuel pulse, fuel pump, generator warning lights, air control, air temp, mass flow meter, throttle position, vehicle speed, Seems to be a lot of options here. I think more than uh, the, it's the Android device. Um, wow, okay, yep, so this is all live data, okay. So desired RPM, neutral position. It's even got brake light switch. So if I put my foot on the brake. Oh yeah, that value, value changes. Um, clutch position switch, neutral switch is in neutral, it says. So if we put it in gear, it's in drive. <laughs> Neutral position switch per se. It seems to be the gearbox. Um, so it's not the, the clutch pedal. It's uh, the transmission neutral switch. But nonetheless, that's uh, that's cool. Um, engine's not running, hence why we don't have RPMs right now. Coolant temperature, 50 degrees, because I had it warming up a little bit earlier. Engine load will be zero, because the car's not running. So it's certainly not as convenient. You can't just sort of flick and scroll with a touch screen. You have to use the touchpad. So when you want to see a bunch of data, um, maybe a little bit comes in. But if you want to see a specific value, you can trundle through this menu and you get that data. And then obviously you can save it. Um, so pros and cons to the way this device works versus um, the mobile. It's got a, a specific module option here for ABS. Although I don't think... Um, we can connect to it on this car, can we? I thought that it was a kind of a dumb ABS. Hey, look, let's see. Maybe this thing's smart enough to connect to it. Yeah, okay. So it's saying not, not supported, which I thought was the case. Um, everything seems to take a little bit longer, right? This thing has to always sort of... Um, are you sure you don't want to quit? Yes. This thing always seems to have to load when you connect to stuff. Um, so that's cool. We sort of did some OBD scanning. We are able to get into the diagnostics. Oh, there's some history... So you could jump back into a car quickly if you wanted to, rather than navigate through the menu. What's in our maintenance options here? Okay, so here's where we could just kind of do things like clear a, um, a service reminder or something. This car, obviously a bit older, doesn't have it, but like if you had a, a newer car, you'd be able to reset your service interval, which is uh, a nifty feature. Settings, where we can change languages and do some tests and stuff. Don't need to do that. Data manager, I presume if you were to save history of a particular car or scan and then there's an update option this thing has a usb port in the, the bum end of it so you can update it which is handy if new vehicles come on the market um, potentially you could get them i don't know if there's a cost for that 
The software and its updates are indeed free, at least for the moment, which is impressive in an industry that typically demanded a subscription type payment plan to keep devices up to date. Those big old clun more clunky diagnostic tools, usually you had to pay them yearly subscriptions just to keep all the latest car info loaded onto the device. So what have I learnt here today? Firstly, yes, this thing actually works really good and gets me some good data. And secondly, yes, I've still got a problem in that, uh, that little solenoid. But thirdly, while these things are good and more accessible now, I'm not sure it actually adds a whole lot of extra value over the top of the kind of mobile phone hooked up to a Bluetooth dongle solution. This thing makes sense perhaps in a, um, a more industrial mechanical environment where you're actually a mechanic and you've got a dedicated device that does exactly what it needs to do. It's going to be reliable, it's going to be consistent and when you're connecting to a whole bunch of different cars all the time, this probably makes a bit more sense. It's got built-in menus with known vehicles and you can go and navigate through there. But it's a little bit tedious, cumbersome to use. Whereas when you're able to just bust out a phone and scroll through an app and hook up to the car that quickly and get effectively kind of the same data. It's hard to beat that $20 dongle over a, uh, a dedicated device. Now, that said, this does obviously have some advantages. It clearly gets more detail out of the, um, the ECU. It's able to somehow pull more information when it's doing that live diagnostic stuff. But in terms of just fault codes, it doesn't do a whole lot more. The other notable features that this adds over a small dongle is those advanced maintenance features like resetting service reminders, being able to perform actions like cycle the ABS pump for brake bleeding, that sort of thing. The other thing to keep in, keep in mind is this car has um, an ECU from nearly some 20 years ago now, 2002 or so. So using this with a more modern vehicle might get a lot more data than what the Bluetooth dongle can get from a more modern vehicle. I'm not exactly sure, but suffice to say when it comes to a Mazda MX-5, this thing only has as much value as the Bluetooth option for a lot more cost. So take with that what you will. Obviously there are pros and cons to each scenario, each, each device option. I think for a home user like me, the, uh, the dongle option is pretty good. Um, maybe if I was doing more diagnostic stuff, having more detailed issues and maybe a newer car, this thing would start to make a little bit more sense. But regardless, it's really actually quite accessible. This thing only a couple of hundred bucks. That's not bad for a diagnostic tool. Back in the day, you were looking at thousands of dollars and you had to be a pretty serious mechanic to have one. At least with this, it's achievable. A notable mention is also this Top Don branded tool that I've had my eye on for a while. Here in Oz, it's only about 200 bucks on eBay, which seems like a really good deal for what it claims to offer. In terms of functionality, it's not that much money. You're getting a pretty capable tool. Anyway, I know it's a little bit of a uh, unusual video, something uh, different to what I've done in the past, but I wanted to try and have a look at uh, how I could get, or what detail I could get out of this car with that error. And, um, this has proven to be useful. Certainly something I'll keep in the garage for the future if I ever have another issue. I've got road cars that could also benefit from this, but obviously for me, tinkering with the MX-5s is where I'd rather be. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.